Odin! <laughs> Odin! Lo, there do I see my father. Lo, there do I see my mother and my sisters and my brothers. Lo, they do call to me. They bid me take my place among them. In the Val halls of Valhalla, where the brave may live forever. I am Magnus of the Feral Horde. Welcome to Bizarre Brain Comics. <laughs> Bizarre Brain Comics. <sighs> Thank you for joining me. <sighs> Running around a lot. Need. Oh. What's a Viking without need? Today, <clears throat> today, I want to, to talk with you a little bit about this book here, or what are the stories in it. This is DC Special number 12, featuring the Viking Prince. In this particular book, we reprint several, uh, several Viking Prince stories from the 50s, as well as um, a, a few other stories. I'll tell you, just mention them a little bit later. Now this character, the Viking Prince, was created by artist Joe Kubert and uh, writer Robert Kaniger. Okay, and this was uh, this stuff. Well, we'll get to that. Uh, now Joe Kubert started working professionally in uh, 1942 at about the age of uh, 16 or so, and he would work for various publishers. But he began working primarily with DC Comics because, uh, and, and he became most associated at that time with uh, the Hawkman Comics in 1944. And in the 50s and 60s, he created a caveman title called Tor, and has had a long association with uh, prehistoric monsters and, uh, and jungle set settings, and eventually doing a, a lot of the DC War Comics. Uh, same with uh, Kaniger, as well as uh, uh, Tarzan. This is in the early 70s. And he uh, started his own art school, the Joe Kubert School, for, uh, for teaching uh, comics, cartooning, and anim eventually animation, etc. And Robert Kaniger, he started writing early with uh, short stories and poems, which are being published in magazines. And he won a New York Times uh, short story contest in 1932. And he also wrote for radio and, uh, and films at that time. He wrote for a variety of comic publishers. And after the Wonder Woman creator, uh, William Moulton Marston, uh, died in 1947, he began writing that title. Uh, he, and he continued writing Wonder Woman up until probably the mid-60s maybe later. And he's most closely, closely associated with the DC War titles. Yeah. Really? Viking Prince.
Yes, the Viking Prince. This is from uh, DC Comics or DC Special number 12, published in 1971. But it's reprinting several Viking Prince stories from, uh, and there's other stories too, uh, from uh, Brave and the Bold. The story I'm going to talk about is uh, from Brave and the Bold number one. It all, in that issue, it also featured the Silent Knight and the Golden Gladiator. And this also has Robin Hood. But now, and those other two, Golden Gladiator and Silent Knight, are also featured in from Brave and the Bold number one from 1955. Is also in this uh, particular issue. But there are other Viking print stories. And uh, the title Brave and the Bold now, starting in the, sometime in the 60s, I believe, uh, became more closely associated with Batman. It was a Batman team-up title. But prior to that, it covered uh, other adventures. Now, the Viking Prince, of course, from DC Comics, you're going to think all I do is DC Comics, but honest, I don't plan on just doing DC Comics. <clears throat> And it, as I said, it first appeared in Brave and the Bold number one, created by Robert Kaniger, the writer, and artist Joe Kubert. And as I said, he was uh, he was one of three historical fiction characters uh, featured in that issue, including the Silent Knight, Golden Gladiator. He was named Jan, John, <laughs> J-O-N, so it would be probably pronounced Jan, the Viking Prince. And he continued in Brave and the Bold until number 24, 1959. He popped up again in Our Army at War, uh, 162 and 163, to fight alongside Sergeant Rock. He made a few other appearances in uh, various titles over the years, in both, uh, both Viking times as well as in the present. Now, this is just my opinion, but I think he made uh, the creation of this, this character and these other other uh, uh, adventure characters may have been a, a, in response to a boom of historical adventure movies and novels in the 1950s, including both the strip and the film uh, Prince Valiant. Prince Valiant was a great movie. Uh, the Vikings, another great movie, and a variety of, of uh, Roman and biblical movies. Now, as you can see, this type, this uh, this cover. Uh, drawn by Joe Kubert, and of course he he did the the other little characters here. Title page also by Joe Kubert. Now here we get to the double page spread. Now again, this is my opinion. I've been a fan of Joe Kubert for over 50 years, and I've seen a lot of his reprint stuff from the 40s and 50s, and I'm familiar with his artwork. And I think, I can't say for sure, I've never seen anything about it, this spread was redrawn specifically for this issue. Because his, his artwork appears more mature than what we see later. Now, Joe Kubert, he's a great, I can, he also did the lettering. I can, I can, but, like in the title here, Joe Kubert style, especially right here, the way he wrote Kill Him. Right here. Okay, so here we see a battle on the on a cliff next to the fjords. There's Jan, the Viking prince, and he falls over the side, hanging on to some flotsam. And then here comes a ship. It's uh, actually uh, a... Uh, Supposed to be a fishing boat. Now here is the actual beginning of the story. So this is where I think the story originally began. In the year, the year is 964 AD. A Viking fishing skiff battles its way through the choppy waters off the coast of Norway. When see now here I can see the lettering looks a bit different. Uh, I have no idea who the letters. I have, for the most part, I have a her terrible time recognizing letterists from their from their work. 
but it's good, nice and clear, and it's not quite cubert, is all I can say. Now, what I wanted to tell you about here, because here is a little, is a little more mature style. Now, but all through his career, I, I noticed, and of course, Kubert is gone now, sadly. Since, uh, I think it was 2014, I think is when he passed away. He has a very organic style to his artwork. That's the only way I can describe it. His uh, line work is, well, well nice. He's, he's a great artist. He's, he was been one of my favorite artists and was my favorite artist for several years but he's been one of my favorites for 50 years like i said it's just more organic uh slight roughness to it which which lends itself very well to this type of material when he uh it works very well for the war comics and it was excellent for for the jungle settings and uh, for tor and later for tarzan it's just it's just great for it and then that's when I, he became my fa uh, my favorite artist then, in his Tarzan years, which I'll I'll probably try to talk about one some other time. But this is a, a nice vi visual setup. That's all you see. It it could have done away without that that one bit of dialogue right there. Probably could have done away with that entirely, and it tells the story very well. You see the battle. See a closer view of view of it. And him falling in the water. And then here's the boat. Okay, here's being picked up. Being picked up. And now this. Notice, look at this. The way this, this panel here works. The, uh, the caption clear up here. And you can see the mountains. There's the cliff. And you, then you read. The dialogue you see the boat then down here just the way this water is just describes a circle right around Jan's figure holding on to that flotsam it just points it right beautiful beautiful storytelling in that one panel right there beautiful storytelling it tells you everything you need to know and also I just love the way he did this water the nice darks, then you see uh, um, the figure highlighted with uh, uh, the foam of the sea. But the way we get the lights and the darks, I, I, I can't describe it. It's just beautiful. I wish I could do that. It's just beautiful. Very realistic. Then you see, see him being drawn aboard. Now here is where I, I first noticed... Uh, uh, because all of this stuff is is very very much in keeping with his with his later more mature style, but his way of doing the hero's face is different, and it, and it matches what I've seen from his earlier work in the fifties, as opposed to later in the sixties and seventies. Now he's picked up. He has no memory. He goes goes to uh, to the home of Olaf, where they where he he's. Uh, uh, um, Nursed back to health by Gunda, Olaf's daughter. But he has no memory. Now here we see, see someone, someone, this happens to be in a little wolf headdress, spying on them. It says, "'Tis the youth alive. The mighty Torvald will reward Sarduk the spy for this choice news." Yeah, so he goes to whoever, we don't even know who Torvald is. He goes to Thorvald, tells him, and he says, He must not live. Take guards and slay him, Sardluck, if you wish to breathe longer. Now, I notice it. The style of storytelling and time passage. I'll, we have no idea how much time, but it's been at least several days, if not, not weeks, just in this one page. You go from here to here, and then here. It just says later. You don't know how much later. And then shortly. So there are three scene changes in this one page. But that's because it's a shorter story. And they crammed, that time they had a tendency to cram more into 
shoulder space. And later at the fishing village, here's Sudluck. Torvald's dogs, if weapons weren't allowed. He's, that, that tells us that these people is, uh, Torvald is their overlord. Might just be a bully, a chieftain. And here's the, the thane or the chieftain of the of the fishing village. And, you, and this panel tells you a, a lot visually. You see, see Olaf there. And of course, he's an older man. And there's Gunda, the daughter. And then there's the our villain. But you, you know, it says right there, the fishing village. You know they have no weapons, but you see all of these guards running. But there's netting, netting right here. You can see stone uh, stonework here. It's in a, a, a castle or or some other similar building. But then still the storytelling from is still a abrupt abrupt change. It's still in the same place. Here's Jan. He ha doesn't have the name yet because remember he's he has amnesia. He throws a net over over the the villains. So you wish to play this sword will will play swordfish against your puny might. And so he attacks the unarmed Jan and uh, Gunda Gunda here uh, uh, tosses him a sword and he quickly disarms defeats the villain. Now here's another another key. Now, uh, this lovely lady's face here, but it's it's a, a beautiful face that you would see in the 50s. In fact, I think it looks like a young Lucille Ball right here in this picture. But it's a, a, a more dated, more dated style. And Jan runs off. He's still being being pursued, and he battles them, uh, these soldier warriors. On uh, um, the stone wall, his sword's sword's broken, and he takes off. But he uses these barrels will serve me in good stead, and tosses them. Damn, he must be strong because if one of those barrels, even even empty, would be very heavy. And he tosses it. Yeah, now look, you can see here, very dynamic style of the way he drew that figure. And that's and that is very figure there is very common for Cubert, and it still is good solid blacks. See the cast shadow, brings that for forward uh, figure forward, and then both the darks and the uh, the less distinctive coloring in the background figures really brings that that figure forward, and very dynamic. And very good anatomy. Kubert is just great. I, I, love, I, I can't say it enough. I love his work. Here, this too. That's a, that's a typical. Typical Kubert figure. So he throws, throws it and knocks all those guys off, off the wall into the sea. So you know, notice. You might notice there that. During, in the midst of the fighting, it shows more detail, more from minute to, to minute, second to second. Builds builds the action, the tension, the action. Because this this one page here, which probably covers uh, probably no more than one or two minutes, compared to this this page here, which is an undefined number of hours, days, or weeks. So the bad guys are gone. And here's Gunda said, You fought like Jan, the great Viking prince of whom we have heard. We shall call you Jan after him. Now I think, of course, at this time, it, he probably is that Jan, but they don't know that. Jan doesn't know that. And here they are. A few days later, Torvald learns that the fishermen have put to sea. So was, he's pissed. He's, he's here's Torvald. He's very angry. And there and the fishermen 
are out at sea. And then there's a little bit of foreshadowing here. It says, this giant crossbow shoots a harpoon, the weight of a man. We use it to spear whales. Did they actually do any whaling? I don't know. I kind of doubt. They may have. They probably did some. Then here we see Torvald's dragon ship off our port bow. Man for attack. I don't know that. But yeah. Here's some more of that great, great. You got the, you got the, uh, the caption over here. You read from left to right. See the, see the water. There's the ship. Then right here in the, in the foreground is, is the man giving the young, very barbaric or Viking-ish. He looks at has the, the braid, braided hair, long braided hair, mustache. Now this is a very good visual right here. This panel right here. You see the, uh, the two boats and it's just one narrow panel. Same thing in, in this one because it's even smaller. And you gives you all the story you need. As the dragon ship closes rapidly on its tiny opponent, well, you can see this is the fishing boat. And there's there's Jean and another another Viking at the tiller, using all their strength, while that big dragon ship bears down on them. And here it crashes into them. We're struck a glancing blow. The next one will sink us. Well, Jan has an idea. Here's here's that older. Older style face. Now his old men look pretty much the same as uh, he drew them later in the 60s and 70s. And then Jan explains his plan. He gets on that big old crossbow with a sword because remember they were armed from those soldiers that they had that Jan had defeated earlier. And they shoot him over toward to that dragon ship. The lad flies like a bird, but no man alone can stop the dragon ship. Now this part right here, this. It's kind of hokey. Well, it's a comic book. I don't think it would work. <laughs> but you never can tell. And there, Jan gets into the, uh, with the sword into the, um, into the sail and rips it down. <laughs> like right out of the old swashbuckling pirate movies. And another, another great, great heroic figure. Oh, look at that face. Even though he's ripping our sail to shreds, we're losing speed. Slay him! But look at the character. Look at the character the mustache, the beard. And again, it tells you, you know, there are men behind him. It's just a relatively small panel, but it tells you a lot. Here's his sword. He's, re he's ready. He looks very a angry. Oh, look at the character. The great character in that face. And then from the tattered, tattered sail. He's running around fighting them. Again, another great, great Kubert figure. Now, it's a little, his his line work or figure work is a little smoother, a little cleaner on the inside. So I can, all, the only way I can describe it than what his more mature style is. Because his, and that's his inking. So there's some, some nice, nice feathering. You see a little bit there. That, that, that. that. Look at that figure, and that figure there. <laughs> that that foreshadows his Tarzan of later, later decades. Swinging around on the ropes, and then all these little guys down here. Tells you a lot. You see the sh the shredded, the shredded sail, him swinging on the, on the line, and everyone after him. Meanwhile, the fishermen board the fishing, the dragon ship. And uh, so now you got the fishermen f fighting the soldiers. Torvald, why did you pursue me so relentlessly? Ask your wandering wits. And he throws the, throws the sword and uh, impels it in the, in the mast. So that tells us right there that there's something, even if it hadn't foreshadowed it earlier, he knows Jan. For some reason, he knows Jan. And he wants him dead. You'll never... I can't speak. You'll never learn from me. And he dives into the water. Is he dead? Well, in comics, probably not. The ship is ours. Thanks to you. Now with this prize, we may fight tyranny. 
and live like free men again. Great, great little cluster of figures. Very Viking looking. Eh, the horned helmets. That was expected at the time they the, had the horned helmets and the, uh, the winged helmets. Of course, Vikings did not have helmets like that. And then here's the end. You see, see those dated looking uh, features on these two characters. You are a great leader, Jan. You call me Jan, the Viking prince. But who am I really? Torvald's dead. My true identity died with him. Yet, if he lives, I will make him speak. And that's the end. Now, I'm going to show now, this was from, this story was reprinted from Brave and the Bold number one. Here's another story. Now, this is from Brave and the Bold five. With more great, what, look at the, look at the monster. Oh, get, here's, here's Torvald again. Great features, great features there, if you can see that. Great storytelling. And he's very, what's a sea serpent? Well, it's fake. We're not going to cover the story. But I just wanted to show you some stuff. Now here, I think this face, even the face here, is different. Even You can already see a little bit of a change in the features in this face here. This is more the way Kubert drew his figures in later years. So this has only been a, uh, about a year or so since that first issue. You see the same in uh, in Gunda's face. Now this would should be bringing in a little bit of fantasy, but we find out that's not. It's just carved ice. It's not a real monster. Now again, here's another story. Again, I think that this was. Uh, a splash page drawn specifically, specifically for this issue, restarting the story. The Viking Prince and the Viking Mermaid. Again, this is uh, Kubert's lettering. And this is more his more mature style on the, on the facial features. Now, that I want to talk a, a little bit more about this, this other story because it's... Uh, it's abrupt. It's only, what, I think six or eight pages long. Two, four, six, eight, ten with that uh, double page spread. But I think it was, originally it was only eight. And that was eight to twelve pages was the usual st uh, story length back at, at that, those times. Especially since it was from Brave and the Bold was an anthology style, uh, uh, title. And then after Viking Prince, and look at more of a true style of mature now. How about that ad? How about that ad? You save almost 50% 50, 50 on hit records you want. Any 12 for 286. Ah. I belonged to that Columbia Club at one time. After that, it was Silent Night. Silent Night. Again, from Raven the Bold, number one. Irv Novik, I don't know that much about him, but again, written by Robert Kaniger. It's some nice, nice, clean artwork. Not as, it's pretty dynamic too, but not as, not as appealing to me as uh, Kubert's work. Then we get, we get uh, down here. That's the Silent Night. Golden Gladiator. I don't know how. I don't know anything about this character. I don't know how much more it was uh, featured. Again, from Brave and the Bold number one. But I will bring this because I wanted to show you the artwork. Again, uh, uh, it doesn't say, but I believe it was written by uh, Robert Kaniger, most likely. But this has the art by Russ Heath. Now, Russ Heath, he was. A marvelous artist. Again, he would later would become largely associated with the DC War comics, like Kubert. But he had beautiful work here. All of this, but I'm going to focus on this. A beautiful figure, beautiful horses, 
and his line work. Nice and clean. Uh, uh, Kubert's has a tendency to be rougher, but that's part of his style. That's what one of the things that makes it more organic. And this is less organic, but very, very nice. Now, you, if you've seen some of the real old comics that had uh, an advertisement, usually on the back cover, to, to buy a whole bunch of, uh, of Roman soldier toys for about a dollar. And they were real crappy. But you see that it had the big illustration on the on that cover for that for those toys. And you saw these uh, uh, Roman soldiers and chariots and on on foot and on horseback uh, fighting back and forth. Now Russ Heath drew that the illustration for that um, that ad, and it's and that's a beautiful that that is a beautiful beautiful scene. I wish I I wish I had it to show you. But that's all. Again, these were more abbreviated stories, more compact. Like that 10-page story that, of uh, um, Viking Prince that we just featured today would have been at least one whole issue, which I think it, it probably should be an issue. It's a, it's a little better... I think, anyway, better storytelling. And now they've gotten to the spread stuff out, so that story might have been two or three issues, depending on, on who wrote it and who drew it. So, thank you for joining me. We'll talk some other time about more of uh, Joe Kubert. Thanks for joining me, uh, Bizarre Brain Comics. Please, please like. Subscribe and share. I need I need views. Share it with your friends if you like comics. If you have no no friends who like comics, like artwork, let them know. Thank you very much.